Hi. In this video, we're going to have a look at assembling a surface mount board with a solder stencil. And this time, we're going to do this using the infrared preheating station that I looked at in my previous video. So we're going to get the board up to temperature uh, and then just finish off the reflow process with the hot air gun. So these are PCBs that I had made from JLC PCB. And if you watched my recent video, you'll see that I assembled some of these parts by hand. Uh, but it does take quite a bit of time. So that's where having a solder stencil will save you quite a lot of time, uh, especially if you've got a relatively densely populated board with lots of parts to place. Um, because what we can do is put the stencil on top of the board, apply the solder paste, and then all we have to do is place all the parts on top and then reflow the board. And you should get relatively consistent results across the entire PCB. Right, so to get your PCBs produced at JLC PCB, you just need to browse to the JLC PCB website, upload your Gerber files as a zip file, and then it will automatically uh, give you a preview of what the PCB looks like. And then if you want to order a laser stencil like I have done for this video, um, you can just check the checkbox here, and it will automatically use the Gerber file data uh, to generate that laser stencil. So you can choose all of your options here. In this case, we've only got a top side on the PCB, one stencil, no electro polishing and no fiducials. And here we can choose our customized size. Um, so I think that was 70 by 100 millimeters. And there we go. So here you can see the PCBs are $2 and the stencil is only $6. So an absolute bargain um, for these PCBs and stencils. Right, so I've just got a sheet of uh, scrap MDF just so that we can um, get the solder paste on the board without accidentally getting it all over the desk. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is going to get a little bit of uh, double-sided sticky tape just to temporarily hold the PCB down onto the MDF. And then what we want to do is just line up the stencil with all of the pads on here. And then when you think you've got that in place, just tape it down lightly. Right, so that's the stencil pretty much in place and it's only loosely held down just to stop it uh, moving around too much. And then what we want to do is get our solder paste and this is the solder paste that I uh, just reactivated in my previous video. So we just want to put a bit on the board and then get yourself something to spread the paste around with and just lightly go over the pads. Okay, so when you've got a relatively even coat, um, in terms of the solder paste, you do want to make sure it's up to room temperature because it does want to be quite liquid. Otherwise, uh, you'll find that when you pull the stencil off, it actually sticks to the stencil rather than the PCB. So you do need to apply a bit of pressure when you're spreading it. And the best angle for the spreader is around 30 degrees to the horizontal, and that gives you a good spread um, onto the PCB underneath. So once you're at this stage, what you basically want to do is try and lift it all off in one go without uh, smudging it. If you do end up smudging it, it's not the end of the world. You can just uh, clean off the solder paste and start again. Um, so what we're going to do is just try and lift this off. So I'm going to pull off the tape first, hold it in place. And then we're going to lift it vertically in one go. So let's see if we can do this. There we go. And as you can see, that's pretty much perfect. Actually, we've got perfect coverage on the tiny 0201 pads and also on the SOD 523 pads. So look at that. That's absolutely perfect. I purposely not populated the SOT 363 parts because uh, I forgot to order the parts to fit on here. Um, but yeah, it looks like we've got pretty much perfect coverage all over. So. Um, Definitely getting it up to room temperature and in the case of uh, this solder paste, adding that little bit of extra flux paste to get it back to a nice fluid texture has meant that we've got good coverage on the board. So what I'm going to do now is put all of these parts on here uh, and then we'll try heating it up on the preheating station. So in terms of working time, you've got around three to four hours before the solder paste starts to dry up again. So you don't have to go nuts supplying parts to your PCB. You can do it relatively leisurely, but I think that's just about us done. And when you are putting the components on the board, you do want to make sure you apply a little bit of pressure 
just so that all of the metallic contacts contact the solder paste properly because what happens is uh, on sort of two pin devices especially if only one has made contact with the solder paste when it reflows the surface tension will pull the component off the uh, pad that hasn't made contact properly and you'll end up either with a tombstoned component or just one that isn't in the right place. Okay, so we've got the Yihua 853A uh, infrared heating station, uh, which I just did a video on, so I'll put a link uh, above here. And we should be able to put the PCB on the holder like this. And we'll turn this on now. And I'll set this to 350 degrees and we can slowly watch this uh, warm up. Right, so we're starting to see a little bit of the flux starting to evaporate. You can see a little bit of smoke. And in fact, it's actually starting to reflow these 1206 components. We are at uh, 180 degrees, so pretty much at uh, reflow temperature. So I'm gonna turn on the Metcal uh, hot air station on the lowest airflow rate. And hopefully we should just be able to uh, apply a little bit of heat just to finish off some of these larger components. It does look like it would actually reflow all of these components on its own with this hot air station. But we've got a nice low airflow rate so that we shouldn't blow these uh, MELF diodes all over the board. And here we go, we're just reflowing the DPAC packages. And similarly, the SOT 223 components are reflowing nicely. And there we go, that looks about it. So now we can turn off the hot plate and let it cool down slowly by itself. So there we go, that's this board pretty much perfectly reflowed. Um, so hopefully you can see that was a really simple process. Just apply the solder paste through the stencil, uh, apply the components, and then you just need to heat up the board. And that Yihua 853A uh, preheating station actually looked like it was gonna reflow the board entirely perfectly on its own. I just used the hot air gun just to speed up the process slightly um, and get a good heat coverage over the board. But um, you can see that was uh, really quite effective. And if you don't have the preheating station, you can do this all with the hot air uh, gun, but you can occasionally have trouble with uh, components like this where you can't get the heat into the pad um, because effectively the component is obstructing uh, that copper pad. So the heating from underneath really helps with that. So um, yeah, the PCB and the stencil, really good quality and very cheap. So I'll put the links down below to JLC PCB. Um, but stencils used to cost an absolute fortune. And I think the stencil that I used for this board, uh, up to quite a large size actually, is only around $6 or something like that. So really, really good value for money. Um, and really hard wearing actually. So you'd be able to make uh, you know hundreds of PCBs with that stencil without needing to replace it. So hopefully you found that video useful. Links are down below for JLC PCB. And until next time, thanks for watching.